So uh, regarding the um, stalemate and the way the governance is going on with Bitcoins, um, do you think that could actually be jeopardizing Bitcoin's uh, market cap? Because considering right now it's market cap dominance, well, with respect to other alts, it's dropped below 70% now. Um, so do I think that this scaling impasse is going to damage the long-term market share of Bitcoin? No. I really, really don't. I think you'll see that Bitcoin's market share will climb and drop in a cyclical way. And people will get disillusioned, and they'll shift all of their attention to another coin, which will then get overwhelmed with attention. And once it's got its spotlight on it, it's going to go, look at us, we're winning, we're winning. <laughs> Shit, what happened? <laughs> oh, the Dow. Oops. And, and then it all flows in the opposite direction. Because when the spotlight shifts, that's when you can't stumble, right? And right now, there's a lot of exuberance, but they're going to stumble. Maybe if they manage an unbroken, non-stumbling record for the next five years, yes. But no one can do that. This is real software, real money, real competition. It's an adversarial system. Everyone stumbles, and so looking at Bitcoin and go, "Ha! They stumbled." Um, doesn't really solve anything. I don't like this adversarial attitude between the currencies. I think they all benefit from proving different points in this giant ecosystem, this community of currencies, where we can test out ideas in an evolutionary environment, where the forces of the market are informing trade-offs and design decisions that cause each one of these little species to specialize into one niche and maybe thrive and conquer that environment. Um, and, and that's beautiful. That's, uh, it is basically one of the first Darwinian innovation labs with real money that we get to experiment with. And all of it is good. Right? Even the failed experiments teach us something. I don't think Bitcoin's market share loses because of that. I think it's just a cyclical phenomenon. But who knows? Maybe, maybe Bitcoin suffers in other ways. One thing I will tell you. Being stuck in the status quo and being resistant to change is a differentiable feature. It makes a system that is extremely robust against takeover. It makes it very difficult to shut down, co-opt, corrupt, and take over this system. Its own damn developers can't change it. So how is an outsider going to attack it? Right? We've got inside attacks from two fronts right now and bitcoins doing the valid greatest cumulative difficulty chain thing every 10 minutes like no sweat that's resistance to change that's a design characteristic bitcoin was designed to do this it was designed to say unless everyone agrees we're not changing a thing and that's what makes it resistant to attack and guess what attack is coming because this shit is getting more and more important to the world. And the more important it gets, the more interest it offends, and the more those interests are going to try to attack it in every way. Political, propaganda, economic, electrical, network, every way. So the fact that even its own developers can't force change from the inside, and even its own miners can't force change from the inside, and they're just sitting, staring at each other, going, I will something if you don't do what I say. And they can't figure out what that something is, because within the rules, they can't actually do it. Uh, that's, that is an evolutionary trait that Bitcoin has. And if you think that's a disadvantage and take your money to another coin, see what happens when it gets really interesting and really important. I like this uh, play with me for a while, this uh, mental exercise. What is the slogan for Ethereum? Running unstoppable code. Yeah? What kind of code is the code you want to run that's unstoppable? Code that somebody's trying to stop. Or as I believe um, who said this? I can't remember who said this quote, but he said uh, the only things worth printing are things that others are trying to suppress. Everything else is advertising. Right? Some journalist or playwright or brilliant person. So the only code worth running as unstoppable code 
is code that someone's trying to stop. And that's a great feature until you put it in practice. So Bitcoin received this massive negative reputation hit from Silk Road because it was the money used on Silk Road. But Silk Road itself was running on Linux. What happens when it's running on Ethereum? And Ethereum is both the money and the platform. Unstoppable code. Look, we're running a black market. It's unstoppable code. Oops. Immediately, everybody's going to go and say, um, "Excuse me, stop that." What do you do then? Hard fork and stop it, or continue with unstoppable code? So now you've got a problem. If Ethereum actually fulfills its vision, it's eventually going to run some unstoppable code that someone wants to stop, and they're going to ask Ethereum developers to stop it. And then we'll see who's resilient or not, right? And if they stop it, then it's no longer unstoppable code. And if they don't stop it, then we've got another problem. Because now, all of those banks that are part of the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance say the magic words. Well, we're not so much interested in Ethereum as we are in the technology behind Ethereum smart contracts. And they start running as far away as possible as they can from the PR nightmare that Ethereum has just become. Right? Just like they did with the Silk Road. It's not Bitcoin. It's blockchain. And you go to conferences and they have the title, Blockchain Beyond Bitcoin. Really? Okay. Who here has done a blockchain transaction? Anybody here own any blockchain? Oh, really? It doesn't exist? Interesting. Based on the conferences, I thought Ethereum, sorry, I thought Bitcoin died and blockchain is the only thing that exists. Right? So just wait until all of the conferences are now talking about smart contract chain. It's like Ethereum, only without the unstoppable code. Brought to you now. With stoppable code. New Ethereum 2.0, now with stoppable code. Did you like smart contracts but wanted it to be stoppable code? We'll stop it for you. In fact, we now have a committee-driven system where you can apply for stoppage, and they will apply an estopel on the code. I'm not kidding. This is exactly what's going to happen. Mark my words, videotape, right there. Come back in three years, tell me it didn't happen. And that's okay. That's trial by fire. Bitcoin is surviving, because it can't be changed. Because it really is unstoppable code. Thank you. We'll wrap it up there. <laughs>